everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another uh, live class. I am excited to get started. Um, welcome in. Let me know where you're from who you're painting with, how long you've been painting, all that jazz in the description box or in the in the chat below. Um, I love finding out where people are from and, and who's joining me tonight um, or today. It's two o'clock where I am, but for most of you, you're east of me. Um, so it's usually uh, night for you or at least in the evening. Um, but yeah, um, I'm excited to paint tonight. If you are new to the channel, um, as was just explained, make sure you subscribe um, and like this video. It really, um, it just helps in getting it out to more people. Um, and if you're new, please let me know. Um, I love, I love um, just being able to paint with you all. So let me know. Um, we're going to go over some quick announcements in terms of like supplies and things like that. And then, um, and then while you guys are drawing this on if you don't already have it pre prepped um, then I'll go over some different announcements um, while that's happening okay <coughs> um, and just to preface this class I am getting over a cold so I apologize for my voice or any coughing or sneezing that may happen um, I'm on the tail end of it but the uh, the great thing about doing stuff online and working from home is that you get to uh, you get to work even when um, maybe you should <laughs> but this isn't really working this is just painting just like you're painting um, this isn't really work for me but the admin stuff is work but this painting is not work for me uh, this is this is the fun part of the job um, so I'm very happy to be here right now um, okay let's go ahead and go over just the basics um, if you are like me and you don't have time to whip this up by yourself I do have the traceable or if you're maybe new and you just don't feel confident um, in your own drawing skills or whatever the case um, I'd like to just point out that using a traceable is just like any other tool tape or a ruler it's just a tool that artists use um, in order to create their content create their uh, masterpieces so if you would like a traceable I do have that in my patreon it's in the chat box below it's in the description below um, it's available to supporters at the lowest tier which is five um, you can just join for this month and get grab all those traceables um, you can stay for next month it, there's no obligation to stay more than just um, the day that you join but you will have access to everything um, until the end of the month um, that being said like I I always have a hard time with traceables because I don't want to use them but as a mom with three young kids, I don't always have the time to draw out a duck in the way that I wish that I could. Um, so a lot of times I do use traceables and I don't believe that they are, um, they give me a peace of mind that um, something as um, tedious as drawing a duck in proportion that make it look realistic. Um, it just makes the whole process more enjoyable for me. I want to focus on painting and not necessarily focus on <coughs> focus on oh no his head is too big or too small or wonky whatever the case um, so if you want to use a traceable I have that down below feel free to use it um, yeah that's that's my spiel on that um, if you are not a part of my Facebook group 
um, or on my Facebook page. That's where I post probably 90, 95% of all of my content. And I give out the traceable, um, I give links to the traceable on the Saturday before the class. So you have a couple days to get everything prepped for the class. So if that interests you, um, please follow me over there. Um, I'm almost at 14,000, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, 14,000 followers, I mean. Um, so yeah, join us over there. There's also a Facebook group that you can um, join, which I will, um, here, I'll post, a, I'll post a link for the Facebook page and I'll post the, the link for the Facebook group a little later. Um, <coughs> but yeah, so there's that. Um, I always have, I have traceables for all of my classes in there. Um, and once you become a patron, you will have access to everything in that tier. So everything, every traceable I've ever posted for any of my classes, you'll have access to. Um, so that's a really cool perk of um, supporting even just for one month. You can grab a couple traceables um, before you head out. Um, Let's go over some other supplies. I'm using an 11 by 14 stretched canvas. So I have sides, top and bottom. Um, I feel like this is a good size to make a statement on your wall without taking over the entire wall. Um, so that's my preferred size canvas. But if you have a different size canvas, that's totally fine. Um, if you do have a different size canvas, the traceables that I have so far are nine by 12 and 11 by 14. That's kind of the two standardized sizes that I provide. If you want a traceable for a different size canvas, just comment on that post. Obviously you have to be a patron to see it, but um, any patron can just either message me or comment on that post saying, hey, I have a bigger canvas or a smaller canvas or whatever the case, um, and I'll just resize it and upload it to that post and then you'll have it. Um, that's a really cool perk of being a patron and having access to all of that. Um, having access to me as a teacher and a resource for you um, to learn and paint, okay? Um, for our colors, today is pretty basic. Um, we are doing, obviously you have your white and your black. That's pretty um, go-to standard for any class. Um, you have your white, your black, and then other colors, I have a brown. So um, I'll be using raw umber. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, raw umber phthalo blue because the blues in this are have a little bit of green hue um, versus your your you know, a warm hue versus a cool hue um, and then I have a medium yellow and then I have a bright green this bright green is going to be essential for just giving life and vibrance to this um, painting if you have a, a darker green that's fine too um, it just might be harder to get a very bright green um, in terms of um, that color, um, but use whatever you have. You do not have to have the specific colors that I have. If you want to know what I have, um, I have the I have hippie hippie crafter acrylic paint. Um, if you follow me over on Facebook, I do giveaways every now and then. Sometimes they send me paints that I like give to my followers, so um, that's another reason to be over there um, in in my Facebook community. Um, so yeah, um, and don't be don't be confused by the bottles. These are not soft body acrylics like the craft paint that you find in the store. This is full body acrylics. They just come in really handy um, bottles that I like to use. Um, so this is um, Hippie Crafter full body acrylics, um, and these are the main four colors that we're using, other than our black and our white brushes. Um, I have my go-to brushes that I use for all my classes. Let me go over them real quick. If you've been with me for any amount of time, you'll probably have these memorized by now because um, I use them in all my classes. Um, and then every once in a while, I have like an extra brush or an extra tool that we use. Um, so I have my medium to large filbert. I have a small filbert. I have a medium round brush. That I also use for texture. Um, so if you, I ever call it my dry brushing brush or my cloud brush or my texture brush, this is the brush that I use. It's a little bit frayed. See that? It's a little bit frayed. It's not perfectly pointed, um, but that's because I kind of use it as my rough brush. Um, I, you got to have one of those, right? You don't want to ruin all your brushes. You just have one brush that you ruin and it's for a good reason. Um, I have a medium to small round brush. Um, and I actually have a couple of these. One is um, a little bit more blunt. One's a little bit more round. <coughs> I 
it's kind of rounded at the tip and the other one is kind of pointed so those are the two like smaller round detail brushes and then I do have a liner brush I don't know how much detail um, per se that we're gonna be doing this I kind of want to go a little bit more of an impressionistic style um, but I tend to lead towards whatever reference I'm doing um, which tends to be a little bit more realistic so um, forgive me if I tend to add too much detail because that is my problem and that's what I try to um, I'm working towards doing a variety of styles and impressionists is I really like impressionism because it doesn't include all those details but you still get the gist of what the painting is um, without being like this is abstract you know um, okay so that those are all the brushes um, I don't know if we'll be using anything else in terms of brushes but I do have a couple other tools I want to go over um, one is going to be a palette knife um, I have a glass palette and a palette knife that I use for mixing I highly recommend this if you don't do this already um, a few reasons why I like to pre-mix my paint one it's really great for beginners um, to be able to blend um, on the canvas um, being able to have your palette kind of all mixed up before you start painting will really help your backgrounds um, also mixing your colors with a palette knife is really helpful because one you don't dirty up your water before you've even started painting um, as well as you save your brushes some extra turmoil um, anytime you don't use a brush and you use a palette knife that's a little bit more wear and tear that you don't put on your brushes as well as you don't dirty up your brushes and get all that paint or waste paint in your brushes versus you know the very 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 little paint that you might waste um, by wiping off your um, palette so there's a uh, palette knife so there's a lot of reasons why I enjoy using a palette knife versus um, brushes but obviously each to their own um, those are just the core reasons why I use it um, and then I also have my little scraper that I like to clean my palette with um, paper towel I have two things of water just in case um, one of them gets too dirty and I can't use it um, but yeah that is um, that's pretty much it um, if you oh I have one extra thing <coughs> but this will all depend on what you want to do for the background um, I have a sponge dauber. This is what I call that sponge dauber because you daub your sponge. Seems seems easy enough. Um, this is for what we call a bokeh effect. Now you can do a bokeh effect without using one of these, but let me tell you, it is 100 times easier um, to do this with a sponge dauber. Um, it is in the supply list. It wasn't on the um, supply list of like you must have this because some people don't want to do bokeh and you can just kind of do um, whatever color background you can do a textured background um, with just your brush and you can have um, a more textured background it doesn't have to be I would I would recommend not doing a super smooth background for this because it's gonna be hard with all those different colors have fun with it make it textured make it be able to see the the brush strokes make it intentional and that's okay and that's actually an easier way of doing it um so i have i actually haven't decided whether or not i'm using a bokeh effect or whether i'm just going to um do the technique that i'm going to show you um but i like to have it on hand just in case i'm feeling whimsical and would like to do a bokeh um but yeah if you've never done a bokeh effect um i have plenty on my channel that's very very fun um, and I enjoy it so that's the only other tool that you might need during this class if you decide to go that direction um, just a note for all of my supplies I have an Amazon list um, I have an Amazon shop that has all of the supplies that I use in there or at least something that's close to it um, I have all of that in my Amazon shop so if you ever feel like oh what was that thing that she used Go to my Amazon shop most likely it's gonna be there um, I have refills on certain um, on acrylics I also have um, I also have like my favorites that I use I have watercolor stuff I have like I have a um, a list called little artists which is like art supplies that I've gotten for my kids that they've really liked um, so there's kind of a little bit for everything um, a little bit for everybody so um, make sure you go over there if you're looking for specific supplies okay um, does anybody have any questions so far because now is the time to ask 
Um, and again, if you have any questions like throughout the class, feel free to also ask. Um, that's why I'm here. That's why I do do these lives because it's nice to it's nice to have someone here um, when you have questions. Um, so if nobody has any questions, we're gonna go over um, how to draw this if you were to draw it. Um, and yeah. All right, um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so with this, <coughs> um, you essentially have two main parts. And I like to think of this as like a two-headed, or not two-headed, a two-ball snowman. You have this first ball, okay? And then you have the second ball that kind of sits right under it. Now, obviously, this ball comes down a little straighter. It doesn't go in as much. But once you get those two shapes, the rest of it will pretty much fill in by itself, okay? Um, so once you get this, these two balls, you can start shaping, you know, okay, so this is about this amount, um, or it's this size. Um, the eye comes up, you know, if, if this is the ball, it's on the upper third, you know, upper third and then just a little bit out from middle. You can try to figure out where everything is. Obviously, if you have a traceable, um, then you've already done this portion and you can just kind of sit back for a few minutes. Um, but for those of you who need to draw it on, um, I'm gonna leave this up. Obviously, you have the picture. If you haven't already started that, please start that now. We do wanna have a general idea of where everything is gonna be before we start the background um, so we don't, you know, paint this whole section because we don't need to paint it the background color. Um, and while you guys are doing that, if you need any helps of tips to where, you know, to figure out where everything is, um, a lot of times I will try to visualize, you know, the four quadrants, almost like, um, using like a, a grid method, but I, I just kind of in my head think about where things are. Um, so like if I were to put this in half and this in half, the beak goes to about the middle, the absolute middle cross beam. Of this lower left quadrant so that's just something that I'm looking at if I were to draw this out um, just freehand um, by myself okay while you guys are all prepping your canvases um, I'm gonna go ahead and go over some recent classes now this was done in our free online class um, last week this beautiful sunset we had a lot of fun with this one um, and some of your paintings came out beautiful. You guys have been sharing them on our artist community and my goodness, I love it when you guys share it because then I get to see them. I can't see your paintings unless you share them. And, um, after, after some of you have shared them, it's like, oh man, I wish I put more pink in mine because it's so pretty. Um, I still love mine. Don't get me wrong, but some of them have been really pink and beautiful and, um, I love them so much. I love seeing your guys' paintings. So if you want to paint this, we did do it uh, last week. It's on my channel. It's free. Go paint it. Um, and I don't think I did. I don't think I used a traceable for this one. Obviously, I have it available, and you can you can go you know you can go get it. Um, but I did this one without a traceable. So if you want practice on doing you know kind of doing it as you go, um, feel free. That's a good one to do. And nature is always easier to do it without a um, traceable. Um, last week, I teased about my Patreon, um, our a uh, our magenta level, our $10 tier level. Um, I said it was going to be a book with flowers. Well, we finally finished it, and it's available in Patreon. This is how it came out. I absolutely love how it came out. I love flowers, and just the lighting is so cool. Um, so this is available in my Patreon at the $10 level. If you join at the $10 level, you will have access to everything below it in the $5 tier level. Um, so, which includes all the traceables. So you'll have access to not only all of the traceables, but all of the tutorials. So it's a really good deal. If you plan to join, um, and you're not, you know, you don't need one of the, one of the traceables this month, <coughs> wait until the first of the month, and then you can get access to next month's tutorial as well kind of a little sneak peek. Um, and then lastly, we did an impressionistic um, version of our dragon. Um, and for those of you who have been following along, 
We were almost done with it last week, and I think I already signed it. I'm pretty sure I'm done, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it for the you know for the remainder of this um, week and make sure that everything is good. I'm pretty sure I'm done, and I'm really happy with it. Um, but yeah, this is what we did this month. Um, it took three sessions. So if you want to paint a dragon, like how cool is that? And my husband, he was mentioning, was like, like, why did you choose something that was like resting, you know, like in a flower field? Um, like, you know, when I think of dragon, I think of fire breathing, you know, and I think in my mind, it was just, it just looks so peaceful and every dragon's got to rest, right? Not every dragon is blowing fire all the time. And it just, I don't know, it's just so calming to me. Um, so we did a resting dragon and I think it came out so cool. Um, so this is a little bit more impressionistic. It's not like as realistic. I mean, let's be honest, it's a dragon. So how can you be realism with a dragon? But hey, um, it was a lot of fun. So if you, if you're interested in that, I would definitely wait until the first of the month because there is three different sessions, um, that we paint. And just to give you enough time, not only, um, will you get this class, but you also get next month's class. Um, which is a two monther, I believe. Um, but I'll give you, I'll give you a sneak peek. We're painting a, um, a castle. Um, so I'm like in a fantasy mo moment right now with the flowers and the dragon castle. Anyways, anyways, if you guys have any ideas of what you want to paint, feel free to let me know. Um, okay. Though that's pretty much all of the announcements. Hopefully you guys have, um, drawn enough of your duck. And we can um, we can get started with the painting process, okay? <coughs> All right. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is figure out this background. So again, you have a couple different options for how you want to do the background. If you are planning on um, if you are planning on doing bokeh, um, then you can kind of just do whatever with the background, whatever colors you want. Um, and then you'll go over it with bokeh and it'll just become even better. Um, or you can try to just focus on the textured part of it um, and leave it as it. So it's totally up to you. We're gonna we're gonna do the textured regardless of um, regardless of whether or not we do the bokeh. Um, so yeah. Um, in the picture, you'll notice that there's actually a duck behind him. Um, but we're just gonna kind of continue that like, whitish green brown colors around him and I'm just I'm gonna leave the actual other duck out of it I'm just gonna put him alone um, there's other ducks around him don't worry he's not like alone but I'm just not gonna put him in the picture um, so let's go ahead and get out our colors I'm going to get out some white it's a good good thing to start with good choice of white and then I'm gonna get out my green and my yellow and then I'm also gonna get out some brown because I know I'm gonna use some I actually have this giant thing of brown that I need to refill my small one with And then I'm also going to get out some black. Oops. let's go ahead and mix some colors so we're gonna mix um, every color that we see essentially in the background so there's kind of like a yellowish green there's like a golden yellow there's kind of a whitish brown tan there's a darker color we're gonna mix all those colors so that when we're painting the background we don't have to think about the colors we can just grab a color and put it on the canvas it makes the whole process 
way simpler, way easier, and it allows us to not have to think about what we're doing. We get to just enjoy the process. Um, so I'm gonna take some white. I'm gonna okay, take just a little bit of white and kind of put it in a cup, couple different piles um, because let's let's be honest, all of these colors are gonna have white in them. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do green, a yellow, a whitish brown. Um, all right, I'm gonna put some green and yellow in this one. We're just gonna mix it together and see what we come, what comes of it. I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown to make it a little bit more earthy, earthy toned. And I'm actually, I think I might get an orange out because I do see some oranges in here. And I think in order to make the, um, in order to make the kind of orangey, orangey yellow color, golden color, I should say. I'm going to need a little bit more yellow but close so this color is going to be your white yellow and orange and honestly these background colors can really be any color you want I would just stick to the colors that are already going to be on the palette um, and I would stick to colors that are going to be like on the ground so you have white or gray like rocks you have your light bright greens you have your maybe your fall leaves um, those types of earthy colors I would um, I would put in the background and that's kind of um, that's kind of where I'm going with it so I'm just um, tweaking the color uh, making it a little bit lighter so I'm adding some white I'm adding a little bit more yellow <coughs> I apologize for my coughing Okay, so I like that color. This color I feel like needs to be a little bit brighter. So I'm actually going to take a section of this. So it'll still be the same color. It'll just be, a, you know, a different shade of it. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it because I just feel like it needs to be brighter. A little bit more white. It's like electric right now. It's pretty bright, okay, I like that. So then this color up here, I'm gonna make darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit more brown to it and a little bit more green. I'm gonna change the shade a little bit. And if your colors aren't exactly the same as mine, that is totally fine. Pick colors that you want to place in the background that you would be like, yeah, that would be a good um, background. Don't feel the need to do exactly the colors that I'm doing because um, that would take a long time to get exactly what I'm using. Um, make it your own and pick your own colors. It doesn't have to be the same. Um, just use colors that you that you want and that makes sense to you. Um, so I have kind of like a darker earthy green. I have a bright yellowish green. I have like a 
pretty orange color almost. Um, now I'm going to wipe my palette knife off. And I'm going to use this white. I'm going to mix um, a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, and I will start there. There's already some other colors in this from my palette knife, and I think that it'll be fine. So this is a warm color, whitish color, a warm kind of tannish color, I would say, which I think, I think works. And then obviously I will have my white um, to grab from when needed. Okay, so now that you have, now that you have um, all of your colors, um, essentially, um, let me go over the colors real fast. This one is a combination of, um, these two colors actually are a combination of white, green, yellow, and brown. This one has more brown, and this one has more yellow. So essentially, you have like a darker, um, like earthy green and then you have a bright yellow green. This one has more yellow and white and that one has more green and brown. So you can create different colors just by mixing more ratios of the same colors and create different palettes. Um, then I have this orangey yellow. It's mostly white and yellow with a tiny bit of orange. And then I have this one, uh, this kind of grayish white which um, is has black, brown, white, um, and it did have like the tiniest bit of orange because that's what was on my palette and I think that that's fine um, Okay, now we're just gonna have fun and Put it on here and I am not going to worry about um, Making things smooth or not seeing my brush strokes. Um, I want this to be a little bit more impressionistic kind of like the um, um, the, um, the dragon and let me just in case you don't know the difference between impressionistic, let me go get two paintings and you can see the differences. All right, so two months ago, um, well, I should say three months ago we started this. Um, we've done, we did this painting and this is very much a realism painting. Um, the colors, the amount of detail, um, it's just very, we tried very hard to get it as close to the picture as humanly possible. Um, and we spent seven sessions on it. Um, so we spent um, a little, a, just maybe a little over eight hours, just, just around eight hours painting this. Now this one, I want you to look at the difference. This was a about a three and a half hour painting, maybe three and a half, maybe four um, or less. Um, so it took about half the time. Um, and if you see the detail in this one, there's so much detail in every little piece of this painting. Um, in this one, you can see the blades of glass. You know it's a blade of grass, but it doesn't like look like a picture it doesn't look like realism it's an impression you give the you get the impression that this is grass and then this is um that this is a, a dragon with scales there's a there's a little bit of detail enough to give you the, the impression that this is scales and trees in the background but it's not realism it's not realistic in its um amount of detail so with that we're gonna have fun with the background and we're gonna give the impression that there are sticks and rocks and other things behind it uh, we're gonna have fun with that and then when we move to here we're gonna give it a little bit more detail but it's not gonna be so fine of detail that it's realism we're just gonna give the impression that these are feathers and these are the colors and um, I hope that makes sense so that's kind of the difference that's the easiest way that I can um, explain um, impressionism versus realism um, you, you get the impression that 
the, these things are the way they are. All right, um, now that we have our colors and we know what we're doing, do we know what we're doing? <laughs> we're gonna have fun and figure it out. Um, this is my large filbert. I'm gonna dip it in my water, kind of wipe it off, dab it a little bit so it's not dripping. Um, <coughs> and I'm gonna start with the bottom up. Um, I'm gonna start in this area because this area I know I want to be kind of green. And I think I'm gonna do two stages of this. The first stage is gonna be a little bit more watery and I'm just going to get this color on the canvas. Maybe using a little bit more brown. But see how it's pretty see-through? Um, that's one of the hard things about green um, is that it can be pretty see-through. So I'm just going to do what I like to call a wash of just doing a pretty watery coat and it should go pretty quickly. I'm just gonna put this all over. And I'm gonna put a little bit more white here in the middle. That's fine, I can, I can do that. I'm gonna put some darker colors down here. And whenever I'm doing a textured background like this, I like to go, um, I like to go back and forth and do um, what I like to call crisscross um, brush strokes. And I just twist this back and forth and I kind of do like a figure eight and I touch the canvas and I pull off. I touch the canvas and I pull off, touch the canvas, touch the canvas. And it does these little crisscross motions. And it's a really quick technique that you can just use to be able to kind of blend things together a little bit. Um, So at this point, I'm just using whatever colors I want to do a light coat of green. Now green is like, green is already transparent, so you don't really need to add that much water to it, if I'm, if I'm honest. Um, Cause it's very, it's very transparent. Uh, it's translucent, so. I just flicked some paint on my blind, so give me a second. Life of an artist. It's fine. I'm sure it's happened before, but I just didn't realize it. It's fine. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and continue this around. And I'm gonna do some more blackish brown up here. Cause it just feels like it makes sense. And don't forget the top of your canvas. You don't wanna forget that.
All right, I'm just gonna go around um, and make sure that I got. I'm going all the way up to or over um, my line. So my headline. I want to make sure that I get all the way up to that line. If you go over that line, that's totally fine. You'll be able to fix anything that you might need to change later. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my brush. We're gonna let that dry. Um, and while that's drying, we might as well do an undercoat of something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this white. Um, I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown and black and just kind of color this out. So I'm making a very light, um, almost like an off-white, and I'm just going to color this section. You can come in with your white if you need to. Don't forget to color the bottom and the side of this. And I can see that I forgot to do that with my green, so I'm gonna go back and do that. This just gives a little bit of a head start um, to adding that color. All right, um, okay, so now that we have that, um, this is what we call the ugly stage. As we mourn this stage, we um, accept that this is what it looks like, and then we move forward. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, um, and I actually want to use a flat brush for this next stage, because I actually, I want to see um, the, like, I want to see the brush strokes of a flat brush and have those like corners um, because that can add a lot of fun texture. So I'm actually going to grab, let's see, what size should I use? I'm gonna grab this one. I think this is a three quarters inch if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, because this is a, this is a one inch and this is a half inch. So I'm going to do the three quarters inch um, flat brush because I feel like that works good for my size canvas. If you have a smaller canvas or a larger canvas, just pick a brush that's according to that size. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start in the middle because that's kind of where my lighter colors are. I'm going to start adding where these brighter colors are and I'm just going to start adding my white and I'm just going to accept that I can see the brush strokes and that I want to see the brush strokes so I'm changing the angles of which my brush strokes can be seen
Um, I'm going to add a little bit of darker gray down here. Darker gray. I don't know if I said green. Darker green. Darker gray. There we go. And I'm going to let things kind of blend out. And because we already have this um, green background, that's going to come through anything that's translucent for us. Um, I'm just going to continue to add water um, to the different sections, uh, to the different colors, so they can all kind of blend together. I'm going to go in with a little bit of these um, orange colors. We're just allowing the texture to come through. I'm going to go into some brighter color up here and just allow that to blend over a little bit and then I can come back with my black and it's going to blend in because it's all wet. Maybe I have a bit darker colors come down a minute, a little bit. Maybe have some bright green move up. I just have a lot of short little um, short little brush marks. And even though in the picture the light markings are actually um, are actually a another duck. I still think it makes sense in the context of this um, painting to still have a light colored um, background for this little this little guy. I'm gonna come back and put some dark over the edge. I 
If you've never done this type of background, I find it actually really relaxing because I feel like you can do no wrong. Maybe that's just me, but I just I feel like there's no wrong that you can do. go back into the green and it's going to blend in with this All right, and that's pretty much it. So again, if you choose to, let's say you did this and you're like, you know, I'm not really a huge fan of the way that it came out. One, I think you might be over, you know, over analyzing it because it probably looks fine. But if you truly don't like it and you don't like the way that um, the certain elements came out, um, you can one you can keep tweaking it until you do um, there's no harm in that because of the type of style that it is um, you can you can keep tweaking it and keep adding different colors and whatever the case um, because you can just keep adding to it and figuring it out um, but if if in the event that you don't like it and you want to change it enough to like actually change change it um, you can do some bokeh um, I like mine enough to I think I'm just gonna let it be I really like this texture that's going on um, I have plenty of classes um, that help with learning bokeh please feel free to after the class look it up or you can pause this even though it's live you can still pause it you can go look at another um, class and you can learn off of that and then either come back to this one um, um, or you can finish it with me tape it off and then do your, the rest of your background it is completely up to you um, but I think I'm not gonna do bokeh I, I like how this one came out um, yeah so that is that I think I might play around with it just a little bit more. Bring some of this green back down. Okay, I like that. put it down <laughs> this is one of those backgrounds that you could just like keep going for forever <laughs> um, okay so that's that um, our next stage is to 
um, make all these lines clean um, in terms of our um, our outline okay so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get a liner brush I'm gonna grab not a liner brush a filbert brush grab a little bit of water but it's mostly just white paint and I'm going to start at the top And I'm going to clean up any paint that came over. And this is really important so that all of your paint from here on out has the same base. Because if you have, um, it doesn't necessarily matter for this head necessarily because you're going for a dark color. But everything else, this light brown, this light yellow 100% you want to have that white background that white undercoat um, especially because most of its white anyways you want to have the same color undercoat um, so that all your paint you know reacts the same to that white undercoat because if you have a green undercoat it's going to look different and you're gonna have to put that many more coats of that color um, so just just to kind of help with the headache that sometimes that can cause um, I like to just go over at least dull it down a little bit um, and come over with some white it also helps me um, figure out where everything is before I start painting my next sections And if you can't see your line underneath whatever color you're painting your white over, just look at it and create your own line. Whatever makes sense for this. And don't make it hard on yourself. If you need to take your canvas off of your easel, if you have an easel, and turn it so you can have a better angle, then do that. Don't stress yourself. <laughs> don't make yourself work for it. Just take it off. Turn it around.
And if you can still see any of your pencil mark, provided you use pencil, if you can see any of your pencil mark, make sure you cover that up. We don't want to see the pencil mark through the green. So cover that up with your white um, and make sure that that's, you can't see it. All right, there we go. We have that. And thankfully we have the next hour to put in as much detail as we can. Um, and when I say detail, I mean impressionism detail um, for, our, um, for our duck. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off um, the parts of my palette that I don't need anymore. I'm going to keep this yellow around because I think with a little bit of actual yellow, um, this can be kind of the undertone for um, the beak. And then I could put brighter tones on top. So I have enough of that that I'm just going to keep that around. Let's go ahead and have fun and create our green color. I'm gonna get out my blue. And we're gonna wanna do a, um, we're gonna wanna do like a, a undercoat for all of these sections because there's such a stark white behind it. Um, just like the background, that, that background, that first undercoat color is really, really important. If you've never worked with undercoats before, I highly recommend it. All right, I'm gonna grab my big brush again. Um, actually, I'm gonna grab my palette knife <coughs> and mix my color first. Um, so I have this bright green. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of blue and a little bit of this yellow green. I'm gonna see what color we can create with this. A little bit more blue. And I'm going for like the medium tone, like the mid tone of color. So I'm kind of going for this cheek color. It's a little bit on the darker side. It's a little bit on the bluer side, maybe a tiny bit of black. Not too much because you don't want to you don't want to gray it out. I'm gonna add more of this yellow green. Okay, so I think for an undercoat, that is going to be fine. And then I'm also going to grab this blue and add a little bit of white to it. And then whatever green is already on my palette knife. Okay, again, remember that this is just the undercoat. This is not what it's going to look like. It's not what it's going to end up looking like. We have to remember that there's stages to this um, and that's really, really important. So the first thing I'm gonna do, um, I can see that this section is still a little bit wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on the beak. Um, I'm gonna do a pretty light, um, 
some white and this kind of orangey color. Um, that's what I'm going to do the beak in as like its first coat. And I will be able to add brighter yellow on top of it. There are those like kind of orangey bits in here. And I'm using a uh, medium filbert, but if you feel like you need to use a different brush, like a, um, a smaller brush, feel free to do that. You don't have to use the same one I'm using. I think that's a good start for that beak. Um, if you wanted to add any sort of detail, it would just be um, right here underneath. Um, I just feel like there is a little bit of a shadow that I just don't want to lose that um, of like placement of where it is. Um, so I'm just gonna add a little line there. Okay, um, this is pretty much dry up here, so I'm just going to start in the middle, and let's see, I'm going to start with this green, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my big brush because this is a larger area, <coughs> I'm going to use the larger area, and again, this is the ugly stage. I'm just gonna kind of follow where everything's going. And if you wanna go into like brighter yellow greens in the certain areas, that is totally your call. You get to choose how you want to do your undercoat. It can just be all one color green. It can be the, the two colors of green that's like kind of over here. Um, it can be the green with the blue. It's however you decide to do it.
I like to, in my undercoats, kind of um, be as close to the colors kind of as possible as I can. So I might come in with, you know, with a little bit of that blue color that's over here. And I'm trying to follow the general direction that this is, um, you know, that this is going. We have the blue that's coming all the way out here. Remember that undercoat doesn't necessarily mean wash. It can mean that, but it doesn't always mean that. It's not exclusive to the term. I'm going to go in with a smaller brush here in this area and I'm going to use the black because that's kind of what's in this area anyways. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this black that actually sounded like a quack. I said black and I heard quack. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> um, now every time I say black during this, I'm just going to think I'm quacking. It's fine. We're fine. Um, I'm just going to continue with my blue all the way around the head. And I'm going to do this like I did before. I'm going to take it off the stand. I'm going to go back in with my green because there is a bit of green right here. And there's a lot of black in this area. I'm just going to mix it in. I'm going to wiggle my brush a little bit. We'll define it later. This is just the first coat. Don't worry about it.
just the basics. All right, this part is white, so I'm just going to take some white and get a um, just a coat of white in here. I'm going to also put a layer of white um, right here. And if you want to do gray for this first section, which is the, you know, it's in the shade you can but I'm just going to pretty much just focus on the white section All right, now for the black. Um, this black has a little bit of a brown hue to it. Um, so we are just going to use a, we're gonna use mostly black. And a little bit of brown. And a little bit of white over here because it's a little bit lighter. I'm just going to brush up into the white because it's still a little bit wet. So I'm just brushing up into the white and then brushing off um, what I have. And it's kind of giving a feather like effect already. I'm not really even trying. Um, let me show you again. I'm going up into the white and then br I'm t I'm brushing the white off of the brush. And then I'm very lightly touching the canvas and then continuing to blend. But again, just like up here, I enjoy in the undercoat still going in the direction of, in this case, feathers. Um, sometimes it's fur, sometimes it's, you know, just how things are laying. Even in that undercoat, still going in the direction that is needed. 
um, that you will be going because it just helps it helps the process so much um, and since I have a fairly dark section here I'm actually going to go darker with my um, with my um, black so that you can see the difference go get a cough drops. Give me a second. Hopefully that'll at least mitigate some of the coughing. Um, all right. I'm actually really excited for this portion of it because I think I'm going to use a, um, a fan brush and use that because you can see like all the little like swoops <laughs> um the swoops that it all has in the in the um in it um and i know i'm not trying to put in all the little detail um but i do want to do that because it looks really fun <laughs> so yeah um all right um working from back to front now now that we have like our overall oh let's go ahead and do the eye real quick um and then we can go ahead and work back to front we'll do this part first um because these feathers kind of like overlay onto this um which i'm going to i'm going to just gonna put this here as part of the uh, there that was just a little bit there okay um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the eye and then we're gonna work from here I'm gonna work do the back part and then we're gonna do uh, this the wing we're gonna do the belly and then we're going to do the head and we'll finish with the beak all right I'm gonna focus on the color first and the color is kind of like a bluish green to be honest so I'm just going to Put this color here and the rest of it I'm just gonna color in black because the rest of it's black and then we'll put in the um, we'll put in the the sky reflection um, after we are done
some of my black um, mixed in with some of my blue color so I'll probably have to come over it um, with some more um, black Alright, so right now I'm going to put in the black section that is right around this eye. So now that we have the eye, um, um, let's go ahead and finish out um, the rest. Um, so let's go ahead and do any other um, texture for this area. I'm going to go ahead and get a texture brush. So this, this brush right here, I'm going to get a texture brush, a little bit of brown. There's no like water or anything. Um, and I just have a little bit of brown and I'm just going to use this side of my brush to, um, give a little bit of brown texture. Maybe a little bit of black. Again, I don't have any water. I'm going to darken up this back wing a little bit. now I'm going to take a different texture brush. You can use um, a large brush that you feel like um, you get a lot of texture. You can use a stippler brush. Um, you can use pretty
pretty much whatever brush you can get like some sort of stipple out of. Um, I'm going to use a dry brush with some brown and black on it. And let me kind of show you. And we're just going to we're just going to add some stippling I'm just going to give it some texture. And if you need to um, rinse it out and come back with some white over top, then you can do that as well. And if I were to do that, I would I would get some white I'll probably put it in this area. just to bring attention that it's a little bit maybe more white. All right, now I'm gonna do something fun. We have our um, fan brush. I use hog bristle fan brush because um, the bristles are stiffer and that's really what you want in this case. Um, a lot of the fan brushes that come in those kits, uh, let me see if I can find one, um, a lot of the brushes that come in like the kits that have a bunch of different ones, um, I got both, I have two of those, one I bought, did a review on and the next one um, was from Grabby Brushes which is um, all the brushes that I use pretty much are from Grabby, um, but the all of the ones that have come in the kits are the same as like the nylon and they just they come together and they don't separate they don't have that stiffness to them um, so I would highly recommend these are on my Amazon shop I highly recommend these because they're stiff they they keep their um, shape um, even when they get wet they keep that spread apart um, fan brush part of the uh, the equation whereas a lot of the nylon ones they clump together and they just don't really they don't hold their shape um, when they get wet so um, I'm gonna be using a hog bristle um, brush and the reason why I point that out is because some of you might have the other brush try to do this and it doesn't work it just doesn't work um, as well so um, that is why I always I always say exactly what I use um, in terms of my fan brushes because it really does make a difference all right so as you can see, um, I just tested it out a couple times um, in the right bottom corner. I've, I've loaded my brush and I've tested it out a couple times and it gives a nice little subtle um, thing. Uh, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start down here because that is where I feel like I need to start And my, my biggest thing is, I would say, try not to do too much because it's you're going to um, get rid of the feather type look if you do too much. I'm 
Over here it's a bit different because there's a bunch. There's a lot over here. So sorry. Also, why did nobody tell me that I had like a little spot on my upper lip? <laughs> How long was that there? <laughs> you can back up and see it there if you care. It's gone now because I looked in the mirror when I got water. <laughs> Well, this is just fun. You have to make sure not to put too many because then it kind of dulls down the effect, right? If there's too many. All right, now right here on the white part, I'm actually going to use the same thing. And I'm just going to use it and pull up. Looks good. <clears throat> All right. So, um, now that we have that let's go ahead let's see we're gonna go ahead and do all of the blue colors I do have to remake these colors because I used all of the colors um, on the undercoat and Everything has dried at this point, so I'm just going to move it off my palette. I will say this is like one of the best things about having a glass palette with this scraper um, is that I get to clean it in the middle of class without skipping a beat. Um, and it's amazing. And it's also very satisfying. <laughs> I've done a couple videos of just me cleaning my palette because it's it's very satisfying. 
Um, okay. Now I'm going to try to not be as detailed. This was really fun and it ended up being a little bit more detailed than I um, anticipated, than like more than I want this class to be. Um, but I think it was a really fun technique to do. Um, so I'm totally fine uh, with it that being a little bit more detailed. With everything else, I want it to be a little bit more whimsical. Um, I'll probably be using one or two different brushes just to get the flow of what is going to be, you know, feathers. Um, but again, it's just going to be like feathers and not necessarily like look realism. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and finish. We have 20 minutes to finish, so I'm hoping we can get through um, the rest of this in that amount of time. But I have to remake my blue. Um, and I think that was a pretty close blue um, if I say so myself. Um, but I have no more uh, phthalo glue. So let's get out more. I'm gonna get out more blue. I'm gonna get out more white because I am pretty much out of that again. I always, I always underestimate how much white I use <laughs> in paintings. I'm always getting out more and more. Okay, so I have my blue. I'm gonna add a little bit of green and a little bit of white. And we'll just go from there. my blue and I can always add more like phthalo blue to make it darker if I need to um, but I'm going to actually work from the bottom up because I'm gonna be using a brush I'm gonna be using my small filbert brush because I can do wide strokes or I can do small strokes depending on um, <clears throat> which direction my brush is if it's you know up and down I can do small strokes if it's wide, then I can <clears throat> I can go wider, wider. So I'm just going to use these strokes, put a couple black in here. I am going to finalize this black over here because that's it's I mean it's black. Maybe I'll do like a dark green right here. All right, I'm gonna go with this bright green. And I'm just gonna start adding these different elements.
I'm going to make more of this vibrant green over here. And I'm going to be a little bit more broad with my strokes. So I'm really just going to go into the different colors as I see them. go into black all right and I'm gonna work mostly on this back end even though I went up into this area I'm working on the back part of it So I'm going to work on just the very, very back part of it um, with these, with the back end, because there are feathers that kind of feather out on the end. I'm just focusing on that dark edge and I'm just kind of brushing up, right? I have a bit of a darker blue and I'm brushing up. Go ahead and bring that dark blue to the top of the head and then follow it down the back of it. I'm just kind of trying to follow what the colors I'm seeing. I'm going to come back over um, with some with some brighter green. But for right now, I'm going to continue my dry brushing of 
just adding these dark elements because without the dark you can't have the light um, so we're just going to add this dark um, and we can add the light uh, in a little bit I'm going to go back over to this blue and I'm going to use this lighter blue that I created. I'm just going to do a bunch of strokes. Kind of going back and forth between the lighter blue and the darker blue and kind of the green blue. I'm going to bring some of that in this area. And again, still going in all of the directions that the that the um, the feathers are growing, just slowly adding on that detail. And I'm not really trying to be precise, I'm just kind of adding what I see. Whether it's a light color or a dark color. Maybe there's like some black color in certain areas. Just continuing to add that. I'm going to go into the to the green right here. This is a really pretty green right here. I'm going to put that color in. I think I want even more vibrant. So I'm going to go and just take in my, the green that I'm using is called pale green, but it's much, it's much brighter than, it's not pale at all. And I'm actually going to use just the stuff that's out of the tube. Because it really does have that vibrant green to it. I'm going to mix this bright green with a little bit of my yellow green just so it's like a shade brighter. I'm going to add a little a couple different tones to the green back here. Remember that adding white will, yes, it will brighten it up, but it also um, kind of takes the color out of it. If you add yellow instead, it'll brighten it up and it'll also make it, it will change the color a little bit, but it will, um, it'll help keep the vibrancy of the green color. I'm going to add some of this green color right here. And just like any class, you can put as much or as little detail as you want, especially in something like this where it's like, I could probably stop now and you would know exactly what it is. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to keep going and add a little bit more detail.
I'm going to use the green that's on my brush to mix yellow and white together and add even more vibrancy to the um, to like some of these light sections. And just add I'm just adding little little lines here and there. I'm just going to add little bits of that same color over here as well. This is like the most amount of detail that I'm going to do. It's just, just in the very parts that are um, just very shiny. I just kind of want to bring attention to a little bit. Gonna add a little bit of that shine over here. There we go. And just a little bit, a little bit of detail, but I'm not trying to get it, I'm not trying to make it look super realistic. I'm just kind of putting the color on there in the places that make sense to put the color. And that's, that's where it's going. All right, I am really liking this, um, but we do have to move on to the beak because we still have a little bit of the beak to finish before we can call it um, a day. Alright, um, while I'm sitting here though, I am going to grab this blue, that light blue that we put in this like me middle section. I'm going to put a little bit um, right in line with the eye. And I'm also going to use that same blue for the sky. I'm going to put a dot and then just to make it as um, whimsical as you want or as realistic as you want but that really ties together um, the the eye 
I'm going to put a little, little bit of detail here. Let's go ahead and finish our beak and then we will be all done. We will be all done. <laughs> I'm going to grab some yellow, just pure yellow, and I'm just going to add it to the places. Um, that's not pure yellow. I had some green in my brush. So if that happens, you can get a clean brush or just make sure that your brush is clean and you can just remove it or wash it around. I'm gonna grab some actual yellow. And I'm just gonna put some of this yellow around here. There is some of this has like white going on, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of white. The parts that are getting a little bit lighter I'm just looking at all of the reflections and seeing where where the light parts are there's a white section on the kind of the the top area and then there's also, I'm going to get a different brush, get a little bit of um, some white, making sure that the brushes that I'm grabbing are clean because that's happened twice now. Get a little, a little reflection right there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of black. Maybe a tiny bit of brown so it's not completely dark and I'm gonna go ahead and give this a line and you can use whatever brush you feel comfortable with I'm using the filbert but if you want to use a bigger brush or a smaller brush I mean that is that is okay There's also a line right here. For the actual line, I'm going to go a little darker, a little bit of a thinner brush.
All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put in my nostril. A little bit of a line right under it. And I'm going to get my black and I'm going to fill in this line now that I kind of know where it is. I'll probably need to do a couple coats just because it is black on yellow um, and you can see that light coming through. I'm also going to do the little um, beak bit um, that is coming out right here. It's kind of coming around the beak underneath. And then I'm going to grab some of this blue, actually, and use this as the, um, as the kind of, uh, the, what am I trying to say? The reflection, I'm going to use this blue, this light blue, um, that same light blue that we used in his, um, in his head. And we just can blend that in as it comes around. And then we can also grab it and put it on the inside of his nostril on the bottom as a way to kind of give that area also a um, reflection. And that is pretty much it. Um, there's only one thing that I can think of, um, and that's just a little bit of detail here. I'm just going to do a light wash of, um, of where the darkness should be for that area. And a wash is just whatever color you have, but it is um, it is just a light version of that. It's a light version um, by means of like adding water.
All right, and there we go. There we have it. That is the end of our duck. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a lot of fun. It came out a little bit more realistic than I intended, but I really liked the background and doing all these like little feather, um, little feather stuff was fun. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this class. I hope it wasn't too hard. And if it is, that is just more reason to indulge in painting. Take your time. If you need to go slower um, than how I go, um, feel free to come back and you can pause it if you need more time. I don't take my classes down um, and I always have my classes available in case you want to come back to them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and post a group. This is my Facebook artist community. Um, so this is the uh, pretty much the way to go and share your painting with the rest of the people um, who painted it as well, um, as well as painting um, your painting with me. So feel free to go there, share your artwork. I would love to see it. Um, and we'll see you next week. I'm excited for next week as we are um, finishing up our September classes. We're doing a, uh, a Redwood Railway. Um, so we're doing like a, a train track in like the middle of a forest and it looks really pretty. So um, put it on your calendar. We'll see you next week. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Bye guys.